In this video lecture, we will review our knowledge on uh, inverse Z transform and using Z transform tables, expressions, and partial fraction expansion. Okay, so in general, we assume that uh, our X of Z, uh, let's uh, clean this, can be written in terms of uh, ratio of two polynomials in Z. Okay, so uh, in this case, we have n many zeros and n many poles of the system. Okay. So in almost all of the discrete time applications, if your system is linear time invariant, you can have a transfer function in this form. And of course, the general signals that we are dealing with generally fits this form uh, very nicely. Okay, so we have zeros and poles, and uh, we assume that m is less than or equal to m because our systems and signals are assumed to be causal. Okay, so what's the basic idea? Basic idea is dividing this x of c into small pieces. The pieces that we already know, such as uh, Z-transform sine function, step function, RAM function, uh, or uh, geometric series, and other kind of similar expressions that we already know from tables and other classes. Okay, so what we do is, uh, let's start with a specific but most important case. Okay, where all our holes are assumed to be distinct. Okay, so it's specific, uh, but it's very common uh, in uh, almost uh, any place. Okay, so it's very common because PI indeed can be also complex. But let's assume it's real, even if we don't need to assume that, then try to figure out something. Okay, so in that case, if uh, x of c is composed of first order uh, expressions, we can write x of c divided by z in this form. Okay, so why I'm using x of c divided by z? can be tricky or like ambiguous for you, but I will show you something. Okay, so what is the Z transform of step function? It is equal to Z divided by Z minus one. Okay, it's not one over Z minus one. Okay, so this is this. If you take the Z transform of one over Z minus one in your Z transform, you will see that it is equal to UK minus one, okay? Since we are using z as our primary variable, our elementary functions are generally in this form. Okay, similarly, if my x of k is equal to a to the power k, my z transform will be z divided by z minus a. Okay, so if you are dealing with common expressions, common signals, without any delays, then the z is inevitable. But sometimes, because of the delays, which can be also inevitable for digital control systems, we will lose z, and it will be because of the delay component. Okay, so let's clean it, and let's uh, do some derivation using this uh, expression. Okay, good. So let's change the color. So the idea is computing i's, okay, uh, a1 to an. And let's assume that we are interested in a j. Okay, J can be like 1, 2, or anything. Or let's keep it simple. Okay, I want A1. Okay, so without loss of generality. So what I can do is, let's do some trick. Uh, let's multiply both sides with Z minus P1, X of Z, divided by Z, it is equal to Z minus P1. This is summation, A1. Z minus PI. This is I, of course. Okay. Then let's take the limit when Z is going to P1. Z minus P1, X of Z divided by Z. Okay, this is the limit. Z is going to P1. Z minus P1, summation I is equal to 1 to M, AI. C minus pi. Okay, let's forget this. So when i is equal to 1, this is equal to, as you can see, a1 plus for i is equal to 2 or any other number, z minus pi is going to 0, it is 0. 0, 0. So I can simply compute each of the coefficients using this simple relation. Okay, and this is the result. Okay, this is called the residue theorem. You can use that. And I think, uh, especially for a simple expression, this is the best uh, formal way of computing 
AIs. Okay, just stick with it. Uh, doing like a direct approach, just trying to figure out like A's and B's can be hard. Uh, just do it in the midterms and uh, also uh, in the winning projects. Okay, yes, so all poles are distinct. We can compute each of AI. The good thing is for each distinct pole, we can always use this formula because when we are deriving the condition, we didn't use the fact that other poles are like distinct or not. Okay, for all distinct poles, we can always use this formula or this derivation. No problem. Now let's assume that. Okay, now let's solve an example. Okay, x of c is equal to one minus b x minus one z minus b. Okay, uh, if I write x z over, okay, just use the formula. So if you remember, what I do is I compute this, and let's clean this. Okay, so I can do that. So it's the same thing. So let's go. So what I need to do is uh, I have two coefficients. A one is equal to. Let's compute the uh, first one. Uh, Z minus one. Okay. I'm computing this. C minus one. X okay. So D divided by Z when z is going to 1, okay? This is equal to 1 minus b, z minus b, where z is equal to 1. If I compute it, I can see that this is equal to 1 minus b, 1 minus b, and it's equal to 1. It's great. Similarly, a2 is equal to 1 minus b, z minus 1, where z is going to b, right? Okay, it's equal to 1 minus b, b minus 1 is equal to minus 1. So x of z is equal to z over z minus 1 minus z over z minus b. Okay, it's fine. So if I compute x of K, this is unit step function, it is equal to 1, because we assume that k is greater than or equal to 0, minus this is b to the power k. As you can see, it's fairly easy to compute partial fraction expansion. Let's check. As you can see, everything is correct. Right? Okay, great. So we computed uh, relatively easily. Now let's make it more difficult. And let's assume that we have a double pole. Okay, so if we have a double pole, and if let's assume that all of the other poles are distinct or we don't care then, but for the specific pole, P1, we have double pole. If we have a double pole, X of Z over Z will have this structure, C1, Z minus P1, C2, Z minus P1 square. Okay, so this is technically associated with P1 to the power K. This is associated with K times P1 to the power K, if you look at the Z transform tables. I generally don't memorize uh, these tables. There's just uh, redundant to do that. Just use the tables uh, or like books uh, to get the uh, basic expressions. Okay, so how we can compute C1 and C2? So indeed, computing C2 is easier. Okay, so C2 is easier because what I can do is I can multiply both sides with z minus, z minus p1 square xc over z. Okay, so if I do it, let's do it z minus p1 square. Okay, good. And take the limit when z is going to p1. Okay. It's nice. Uh, and let's look what happens. So this is z minus, let's change the color, p1 square. If I multiply with this guy, it will be c1 times z minus p1. When z is going to p1, so it is 0, so this will be 0. 
So if you look at here, everything will be computed with zero. All other components. But here what we will left is just C2. Great, it's C2. So uh, in order to compute C2, we just need to uh, multiply x e to y by C with z minus p1 square. OK, so we compute C2. How we can compute C1? So one method is, uh, let's assume you computed C2, and you know all other parts. Just equate both sides to uh, drag to the computations, and you can find C1. That's fine. It's the correct way to do that, but it's long. Instead, what we do is, instead of taking this limit, we can derivate this, okay, differentiate with respect to z, and then we can take the limit. And indeed, it will give you the, say, c1. So c1 formula is equal to, z is going to p1, d over dz, c minus p1 square, x c y by z. So proof is relatively easy, but I'm not uh, going to go to the proof uh, in this lecture, but you can just look at your textbook to understand the basics. So it's kind of very simple because when you take the derivative of this term, it will be 2 times z minus p1, and in that sense, you will be able to uh, reach c1. Okay, this is the basic idea. We have the formula, and let's check if it's correct. So this is c2, this is c1. Okay, good. So if you are triple pole, you will basically need to increase the order here, and you need to increase the order of the derivative. Okay. In general, in the midterms, I never ask third order, fourth order, or anything like that. But it's possible I can ask like third orders in the mini project, but you can look at lecture notes, books, uh, like tables, and anywhere to solve the problems. But in the midterms, when you have time limitation, don't expect anything that's larger than second order in terms of number of poles. Of course, the system can be higher order. Good. So let's solve an example. OK, so uh, x of z is equal to 2z to the power 2 minus 3z x z minus 1 squared. So the thing is, I, I cannot divide this by z. OK, this is the basic idea because, OK, I can. Sorry for that. Oh, let's do that. OK, so let's divide by z. If I do that, this 3 will disappear. OK. Now z will disappear, and this will be 2. OK, great. And the goal is writing this in this form, right? Uh, c1, z minus 1, plus c2, z minus 1, square. OK. So let's compute it. c2 is equal to, let's write this. Limit when z is going to p1, and we know that p1 is actually equal to 1, okay, which is good, uh, equal to z minus 1 square xz divided by z, okay, so this is limit z is going to 1, okay, if I do that, actually it's pretty easy, this 2z minus 3, so it is equal to minus 1. Great, it's minus 1. So c1 is equal to limit, z is going to 1. Now I need to take the derivative of this expression, which is this expression, limit z is going to 1. If I take the derivative with respect to z, it is, will be equal to 2, it will be simply 2. So x of z is actually equal to, what is c1? Minus z over c minus 1. No, OK, it's not c1, is 2. Sorry for that. OK. 2 times z, z minus 1, minus z, z minus 1 squared. If I take the inverse z transform, x of k is equal to, so this is unit step. 2 times unit step is 2 times 1, or 2, minus, what is this? This is a ramp function. This is k. So technically, x of k is equal to 2 minus k. Let's check if it's correct, hopefully. OK, this is already correct. I did all of the computations for you. OK, this is good. 
Okay, two minus k. Okay, all of my computations were correct, which is good. Okay, so uh, I generally try to do it uh, by myself, uh, not looking at lecture notes, uh, and try to figure out if I can uh, do it in a uh, relatively short term. Okay, so uh, we solved distinct case, and now we solved double pole case. And what is next? Next, yes, solving some problems. Okay, so actually this is the pretty much everything you need. Of course, you need to look at the tables because there are some dirtier examples, such as like uh, when it's cosine and sine, uh, you get like a little bit longer expressions. Uh, so I recommend you to solve some examples, especially from your signal systems course or the ones in the book. Okay, now another example. Okay, so it looks familiar, right? As you can see, uh, this is the same example, okay, here, let me look, here, okay, so let's clean this, it's only missing part is C, okay, so we don't have Z here, okay, so this is Technically equal to it, we don't have z. Instead of this, what I can do that, I can write a z here, and I multiply, I multiply everything with z minus one. So I know that inverse z transform of this is equal to one minus e to the power k. Okay. What is z to the power minus one? By shifting theorem, it is the like causal shift with one step. So x of k is simply equal to 1 minus v to the power k times u k minus 1, where u k is the unit step function. So what I do is I shift everything by 1. But of course, what I need to do is I need to add minus 1 also here, because I'm shifting everything. So shifting of unit step function, you just add this, but in order to shift b to power k, you need to also add k minus one. Okay, let's look at the result. Okay, yes, very great. Okay, so for example, it may not be very clear to you to, uh, in this kind of examples, but try to figure out where there is a delay or where there is not, is the like artistic uh, or uh, engineering part of the problem. It's not a very clear way of doing it. You need to get some intuition by just looking at the expression. Okay, so one more example. Good. Okay, so, so it's a second order uh, transfer function or second order uh, C-transform expression. We have two poles, but numerator is also second order, but we cannot divide it by Z. Okay, so it is kind of tricky. So when we have same order in numerator and denominator, the first truth is just decrease the order of numerator. How we can do that? Very simple. Okay, just do long division. If we do long division, we will see that. I'm not going to do all of the computation by myself because it's just algebra. This is equal to 3z minus 4 divided by z squared minus 3z plus 2. Okay, just do it by yourself and you will say it's correct. Okay, so let's call this part, I don't know, y of z. We can deal with one later. So y of z is equal to 3z minus 4 divided by z squared minus 3z plus 2. Okay, good. So uh, the problem is, as you can see, I can not divide this by z because numerator is not dividable to the z. This means that there should be some delay here that I need to deal with it. Okay, so now let's do the classical partial fraction expansion that we already know and decompose it into two. A1, z minus one, okay, plus A2, z minus two, okay. So what is A1? A1 is equal to, okay, 3z minus 4 divided by z minus 1, z minus 2, 
times. So A1 is this, C minus 1, Z is equal to 1. This goes like this. So if I compute it, this, this is minus 1, this is minus 1, should be 1, right? It's 1. So A2 is equal to, same thing, 3Z minus 4, this should be C minus 1, but Z should go to 2, and in this case, I can, if I compute it, it should be equal to 2. It's great. Okay, so I computed A1, I computed A2, I know that there is A1 here, so my expression is this. Okay, good. So I can obtain this. 1 plus 1 over z minus 1, 2 over z minus 2. So what I can do is, I can uh, move this one to here. Okay, z minus 2 minus 2 to obtain this expression. Okay, it's good. I computed x of c. Uh, I like fractured x of c, uh, divided into similar pieces. Now let's compute x of k. So what is this? If we had z, it will be unit step, but we don't have unit step because it is 1. So it is delayed unit step. So it is equal to u k minus 1, where u k is the unit step function. Plus, what is this? This is simply 2 to the power k. Okay. So let's check if it's correct. It is correct. Okay. Uh, okay. As you can see, this is slightly different. Then this. Okay, so is it same or not? So it is same. Because what is 1 minus delta k? Okay, 1 is this because it is unit step. So if you subtract impulse function here, what you will do is you will call in that. And this is equal to u k minus 1. So why this is important? Because so one of the good things about partial fraction expansion and z transform is even if you are doing the same thing with your friends, uh, they can certainly look different. And it's almost impossible to understand if they are same or not by just looking at the expression. This is very little easy. When grading your uh, midterms and somewhere in homeworks, what I do is, instead of looking at expression, I plot it in MATLAB or OCDEV, and I try to look if it's correct, if it matched with my result or not. Because of the existence of delays, deltas, and other kind of things, the expression, symbol expressions uh, in time domain may look very different, even if the signals are same. This is just a difference in the expression. Okay, so uh, when you are like trying to understand if you did uh, correct or not, and talking with your friends, talking about expression is useless. And sending your code to your friend is also cheating. So what you should do is just uh, try to be careful with your computations. Try to solve problems from different perspectives and try to debug your result by yourself. Okay, so this is everything I want to talk about partial fraction expansion. Uh, in the next lecture, I will talk about how we can find inverse transform using the simulation method.